like a mighty army. We keep marching onward, winning every battle with the Lord by our side. And we got. Child can face uncertain days. 
that song too that goes along with this one I can't even walk without you holding my hand Amen. praise God and that is the truth there's ever been we can't do anything can't even walk without the Lord Amen it's very important to know one thing how many know today that you're born again Amen. come on lift up your hand and testify how many know that you're a child of the King glory to God hallelujah if you're a child of the King then you should not have need for anything. Praise God. All you have to do is go to the Father. You know, what a king does, a king decrees. A king don't have to ask anybody. They don't have to check around. They just decree a thing. Praise God. We're a child of the king. Not only that, when we got born again, he made us king of kings. He's the king of kings. So therefore, we're kings. He is the Lord of lords. So therefore, Therefore, he being Lord, we're Lord. Praise Thank God. You. So what do we do? Praise God. We decree a thing. Thank you. If we have need of something, we just declare. Praise God. I was watching somebody on TV. Brother Copeland, I believe it was. And he said, I declare this year to be a year of blessing. I declare this year to be a year of increase. Now, he didn't say look out the window and look at the gas pumps. He said, I declare that this year is going to be a year of prosperity. Prosperity. If you want what the king has, you're going to have to declare what the king has and what the king is. Glory to God. Declare that. Praise God. Make a declaration. So let's do it right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the king. Is that you?
has made me his own and I'm washed by his blood I'm clothed in his love and someday we'll sing with the angels above oh yes oh yes I'm a child of the King Say it again. Praise God. Praise God. Well, praise God. Praise God. I'm a child of the King. Amen. Thank you. For oh, the yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank Glory you, Lord. to God. Lord. He has done so much for us. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we don't have any uh, anybody that's been turned in. Uh, I want to let you know that we went up to see uh, Gavin yesterday. And uh, you could tell he was depressed. He had a lot of problems going on. And and we, we were on our way back home, and, and we tried... Uh, we, I guess we come up with a half a dozen different things it could have been but you know the thing about it is we've got a we've got a God that knows exactly what it yeah. is like we don't he don't yeah. we don't have to question him. that he'll even tell us how to pray yeah. and he'll even we can pray through the spirit mm -hmm. and, and he'll he knows exactly and when he when we pray it goes out into the spirit world and yes. things starts happening right. because yeah. we pray and and because we go to him and and he can he can uh, he can let let uh, let every ever everybody know that it's got anything to do with it what they need to be doing and I and I thank God for that yeah and uh, we, we did have requests for our, our uh, country and our, our world mm -hmm. today is uh, because of people trying to get more power for themselves yeah we they, they, they try to they, a lot of people have to suffer there's a lot of people that uh, we was he was talking about food on our table there's a lot of people yeah. over there and and uh, don't have, just, they don't even have food. Don't they have, don't have water today. Right. And and let's just pray for them that right. they'll, they'll get whatever yeah. they need. That yeah. Somebody will get it to them. Yeah. There's people that can get things to to those folks, and yeah. and uh, they're yeah. they're they're yeah. fighting yeah. with everything they they've got for them for yeah. themselves and and for their their country. Yeah. And so we're going to pray that they they'll have everything that they need <laughs> because there's other countries that can supply those things and can get it to them. There's ways of doing that. So. Let's let's pray especially for that today. Pray especially for the for the leaders of the, uh, that that they'll they'll know of the other countries that they'll know exactly what to do. That they'll know how to help and and uh, and and do the right things. So let's just stand and, and and go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Praise God, Father. We thank you today, Lord, for all that you've done and all all that you're doing, God, and all that you're about to do, Lord. We thank you. God, we thank you that you are, that you know everything, God. That you know everything that we we, uh, we may not know everything, Lord, but we know it, you that you know everything. And God, we thank you, Lord, for whatever Gavin needs, Lord. You know what he needs, and we're asking in the name of Jesus that, that help will come to him, Lord. And God, this world, Lord, you you know the situation here. And Father, we can see you working in all kind of ways in this world. God, we, we're believing that things are going to happen, that those folks over there are going to get food, and they're going to get water, and they're going to get the things that they need, Lord, and we give you praise for that. We give you praise for our church today, Lord. We give you praise for our pastors. We give you praise for this congregation, Lord, that, has, that comes together and, and, and works for you, Lord. And God, we thank you for that, and we thank you for this, this uh, all that you're about to do, Lord, for the money that, that, you, that you give us every day. Lord, for 
the finances that we need to, to, to supply our needs, God. We thank you for that. We give you praise for all that you're doing, God, for the healings, Lord, that we've already seen, God, and, and for the healings that are taking place right now. And Lord, those that, are, uh, that, that we've already prayed for that's being healed is already healed. And God, we give you praise for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. And glory to God today. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to say, I <clears throat> had several people this week said that we listened to y'all on Facebook and we want to welcome those that are here by Facebook. Uh, uh, they thank God for those that are listening and saying that they're getting hold to some truth and getting hold to some things. Is it being a blessing? Praise God. And uh, maybe those that are not saying that, but if they're hearing, yes. at least they got an opportunity to, to say yay or nay. That's right. yes. And I want to say, I want to appreciate uh, uh, little Jerry. And we got another uh, uh, electronic person back there too that is helping him. We appreciate him. He's got his earphones, <laughs> headphones on. and He's taking care of business for us. And we appreciate that. Amen. And that's a little miracle right there that is in the making. Glory to God. So we appreciate him being here today and appreciate all that God is doing and pray that there'll be something said. Appreciate the congregation that's here today. Hallelujah, Brother John and them are probably on their way home now and Brother Billy and them maybe from uh, getting their truck up there. And so, uh, But we're just glad that we're here. So good to see Candy and Zach and little Zach. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I seen him and Candy on the... On Facebook the other day, and uh, it reminds me of her a lot when she was a little bitty thing. She was so stubborn you couldn't tell that young and nothing. I told her that was a picture of her on the television, and she said, "No, it is not." I said, "Candy, that's you. That's you when you were littler." And she was about as tall. She said, "No, it is not." I never did convince her that was her, but it really was. <laughs> God, hallelujah. But you know what? God would take that little stubbornness and turn it to the good. That's why God gave it to us. Amen. Just turn it to the good. Amen. Make a good preacher. He was back there preaching. I told him earlier, he was back there while Granny was teaching. He was kind of preaching a little bit. So, uh, amen. He did. Yeah. Praise God. But we're so glad for the Lord today. Stand up, if you will, all over the congregation, and we're going to just get prepared to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Does anybody need a word today? Yes, Amen. Are you hungry this morning for a word yes. from the Lord today? We've got one, but we need some more. Faith cometh by hearing. Appreciate Brother Jason and Heather and them being able to be here this morning. They've been having to move and just had a big job on their hands. I would hate to move four stories down or whatever, three stories or whatever. I'm glad you got it. Amen. I was praying for y'all. I was praying that you wouldn't call me. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm messing with you. <laughs> I'm praying that y'all be okay toting that stuff up and down them stairs, man. Don't rip stuff four or five stories up. My goodness alive. Sister Dorothy, she used to, now, now they didn't move like that, but Sister Dorothy, bless her heart, she went on to be with the Lord. She would move about every two or three months and she would rent the highest apartment she could get and she called me every time she needed to move. I don't know at the times I told the furniture up and down them steps. So I was praying for y'all. I know how you feel. <laughs> Praise God. But let's get ready. Amen. Praise God to hear something from the Lord. You're not going to remember everything that the preacher or the teacher says. But you're going to remember something that that preacher or teacher said by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because that's where you live at. And that's what you need for that's today. Right. So get a hold of that. Creflo Dollar says it. Brother Copeland says it. One word from God can change our whole life. One word. The whole situation walked on about the ship and said, be still. And it was still the elements obeyed the Lord. Amen. Just like the other day, the elements of fire on Sunday morning, we declared you're not coming across this place and jump on this church. You're not going to jump on God's people's stuff. We're going to cause you to stop. And guess what? That night fog just moved in. 
You remember that? The next morning it was foggy up until noon and then the rain set in and it started putting it out. How many know that is not coincidence? That is Christians declaring you're not coming on my stuff here. Take your hands off. Amen. Declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. And it will be so. Praise God. Absolutely. No questions asked. Let's get ready to hear a word this morning. You ready? Would you pray with me? Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Praise you for this congregation. We praise you for the congregation on Facebook that will be listening this morning. Let them give it a blessing. We know that Angel is listening. Every service that we do, she's listening. We want you believing your blessing angel this morning, God, and different other ones that have mentioned that they're listening, God. Even those that are going to other churches are listening to our program, and we're thankful for that. God, our only, only desire is, like Janice taught this morning, is to get the gospel out. Gospel is not a, a principle, but the gospel is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. And so we preach in Jesus Christ and him crucified. Lord, let us receive today. Amen. The word of truth, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I got a lot of scripture that I want to read this morning. A lot of things that uh, God wants us to read from the word. And so we're going to do that this morning. And Brother Keith, I appreciate Brother Keith. And since Crystal's not here, boy, he, he is right on the money. And he's got these scriptures up here for us. And uh, so I'm going to begin to read. And in, in, uh, Janice mentioned this Psalms this morning. I want to read Psalms 91. Psalms 91 is very powerful. And if you can't get a word out of this that'll help you, I, I don't know what else you need to read. But Psalms 91 is the most, is my favorite. Let me just say that. Between Psalms 91 and Psalms 23 are my favorite scriptures. There is power in this Psalms 91. Now when you're reading Psalms 91, understand this, that the gospel come, is coming out of this. This is, Jesus, this is talking about Jesus Christ. And this is, when you read Psalms 91, you're hearing the voice of, of our covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. This is a now, a now word. Praise God. Uh, it, Old Testament is types and shadows of things to come. Types and shadows don't make them not valid. It makes them valid. Now, I want us to rightly divide the word this morning. As we're preaching this word of God, I don't want us to be offended. I don't want us to be condemned. I don't want us to take it like uh, the, the Bible or God or the church is jumping on me for a particular reason. It's not so. God would never do that. It's been done by preachers. I pray no more of this one to do that. But I want us to understand that there are some things that God is wanting us to know. There are some things that God is wanting us to understand of why maybe some things is not happening in our lives when we declare we're born again Christians, we, do we need to know if some things are not happening in our lives? Don't take offense. Just say if you were to break your arm and you go to the doctor and the doctor goes in and he says, sir, your arm is broken. We're going to have to set it and fix it. Don't get offended and say, I don't know why you're putting me down. He's not, not putting us down. It's just, just your arm is dislocated. And so we need to, need to understand why uh, it is and get it fixed. I want to get fixed. Me too. I got some things in my life that I want to see. And if there's a problem within me somewhere, I want to get it fixed. Get it fixed because, see, I want to know how to be blessed, how to be increased, how things to manifest in my life. Are you with me today? Amen. I pray you're with me in Facebook that you won't be offended in any way, but you'll be uh, built up yes. in this word and in the scripture. The title of my message is The Place of Blessing. Somebody say that with me. The Place, place. of Blessing. How many know there is a road of blessing? Yes, sir. There is a place that we should be where God is wanting to manifest himself. Yes, sir. 
There is a place that God has for us that he wants to do things. Let me ask you this in Facebook. Are you concerned today about the will of God for your life? Y'all talk to me. Are we concerned today about God's will for our lives? Or is it, and, and don't answer this, but or, or is it that what is to be will be? And, and like Janice said, we're just going to float along and, and whatever is whatever. And, you know, it, and it is what it is. That is a demonic theology. Come on. That's right. Are you listening to me? I said that is a demonic, devilish theology. God has a purpose, she said. God has a purpose for each and every one of us, not just for the pastor or the singers or the musicians, but for each and every one of us. And so I want us to, to, to get, what I'm trying to get at is I want us to get ready to receive. Because it doesn't matter how well I preach. If you can't say amen... And receive what I'm saying, then I've not helped you, but I've helped somebody. Amen. And I'm going to help me because I'm going I'm to get my stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get my, I need some stuff. I need some stuff showed up in my life and it ain't showing up. And I know I'm born again. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the king and it ain't showing up. I need to know why. Come on, somebody. And the devil can't hold your stuff unless you allow it. So anyway. You ready? Yes, sir. Need to get going here. Psalms 91. Now, I'm going to read out of the Amplified. And if you don't have the Amplified, you might look up here on the board with us. Brother Keith is going to work with us on that. He's got the Bible there for you. You ready? Yes, sir. Reading Amplified because it turns the volume up on. Sure enough. It's what amplification does. Turns the volume up. I need the volume turned up. Yes. <laughs> Amen. You need to... You need, all right, Psalm 91. This is the Psalmist David talking. He says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Now, as we're reading, it ain't going to hurt you just to say what jumps out at you again. Just say it again. That's you might, right. no foe can come against me. That's right. Come on. <laughs> as we're reading this, say some things. Amen. Verse 2 said, I will say, I, so. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, on Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Yes. When they're trying to take my babies, they ain't getting them. Because the Lord. Come on. When I can't put my hands on it, I can't fix it, and they ain't taking my babies, they ain't taking my sons. They ain't taking them. Gavin come in here on the day of his grandmother's funeral. And he come up here with tears in his eyes and put his arm around me and he said, Uncle Jerry, I love you. I said, buddy, I love you. He said, I, I, I don't know if you know it or not, but I'm having to do time. I said, well, I want you to know this one thing. Don't do time, use time. That's it. it, makes it redeem the time. Use the time, redeem the time. It's a good time. I told him, I said, son, for God to talk to you. Amen. And I said, when God talks to you, yes. he's going to give you the truth. Yes. Just like your grandma and your grandpa. You know why? Because they, they love you. And he loves you. Amen. I will confidently trust. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Confidently trust. And then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the deadly pestilence. And then, I want you to notice that word then. And then, because this will be real important in a few minutes. And then, and then he will cover you with his pinions. Under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. I don't know if I can get through this. 
You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night. Boy, is this turned up or what? Come on, no. Nor of the error, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked. Amen. Thank you. Government. Come on, somebody. That's right. That flies by day. <laughs> nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, evil spirits, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Glory to God. I say amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. To the hurricanes, to the fires, to the, to the pestilences, to the diseases, to the coronas, you'll not come near me. That's it. Only a spectator you shall be yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the most high as you witness the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. Somebody say there is a place of blessing. There shall no evil befall you nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. That's it. Somebody on Facebook needs to hear this. That's right. Glory to God. For he will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend yes. and preserve you in all your ways. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Of obedient service. Thank you, sir. He's a preserver and he'll declare angels. They shall bear you up on their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. The name of Jesus has personally, has a personal knowledge because he knows and understands my name, has a personal knowledge of my mercy. God have mercy. Come on. Has a personal knowledge of my love. And has a personal knowledge of my kindness. Amen. He trusts and relies on me. Knowing I will never forsake him. No, never. Amen. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And y'all stop messing with me about living 120 years. Because I got Bible for it. With long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Whew, is that amplified or what? Amen. Glory to God. Now, all of the blessings that we just read about, about hinges on two verses in this chapter. All of those things that we said amen about hinges on two verses in this chapter. And it hinges upon verse number one and verse number two. Now, I, I know already.
already on Facebook and we've already asked. Every one of us in this congregation have lifted our hands and said, I'm a Christian. Oh, yes, I'm a child of God. And I don't have no doubt about that. I know I don't know myself. But I don't have a doubt because I know you. I know. I see a lot of y'all. I was there when you got born again. I know this. But there are some things that we just read about the promises and the blessings of God that is not working in our lives. Yes, Come on. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. And I'll go ahead and quote this too. Who walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. There's not a one of us in this building and anybody in the sound of my voice that does everything right. That's right. Amen. That lady Janice talked about the other day that she had for the whole year had done everything that God had told her to do. If that was the case, she should have been a, a, a halo. <laughs> glowing around her and everybody her shadow touched they should have been delivered and healed and set free because if that was truly the case all of these things that we just read just in the promises of this one chapter should have been just manifesting in that person's life I declare to you there was only one that walked this earth that done everything by the Holy Spirit, being led by God, that done Sister Linda everything that God told him to do. Amen. And his name was the gospel. His name was the word. His name was Jesus. His name was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now if you think I'm telling you up here that God can't do nothing for you because you don't live up to par, that is not what I'm telling you. Right. What I'm telling you is the psalmist David that wrote this very verse and chapter and scriptures and promises. He did not do everything right. Come on, somebody. That's right. Yes, sir. But what he did do, he walked after the spirit and not after the flesh. In other words, the Bible said that David had a heart, Brother Tommy, toward God. Come on. People have a heart toward God. That don't mean we say everything right or do everything right. But my point is I want to talk to some people that really concerned about God's will for their lives. Yes, sir that are really concerned about the things of God. Oh, you slip up and mess up, but you need to understand this. So these promises here yeah. hangs on two scripture. Chapter, verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Number two, second hinge. I will say of the Lord, when anything bad happens, be careful about what you say. Right. Come on. Be careful about the first thing that comes out of your mouth. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. What comes out of our mouth has power and creativity. And when a storm comes or a fire comes or a situation comes, child of God, you listen to me. Don't you let bitter water and sweet water both come out your mouth. Right. Because if you do, there are some things that the enemy has gotten in that won't let you receive from God. It hinders. It wasn't that. It was that you got to be careful of the first thing that you say. In a tragedy, in a situation, what you're believing for. It said, I will say of the Lord. You've got to, that first thing. Don't start talking about your... Y'all don't get mad at me. Don't start talking about your diabetes. Don't start talking about your heart trouble. If you got a heart, if you're having a heart attack, don't. It, it ain't. You, you got to understand something. You've got to deal with it now. Listen to me. You're not trying to act like it ain't really happening. Right. 
That's the name and claim it part. We know we're not into that. But what we're saying is, is, is did you know that David that wrote this when he fought Goliath at 17 years old? Did you know that David did not call Goliath a giant one time? That's right. Read it, read that scripture over there. Go over there and see yeah, it's like it's in 2 Samuel. He never talked about how big Goliath was. Now the whole armies of the living God, Donald talked about how big Goliath was. They talked about this giant. They ain't nobody can come against him. They even detailed it. Listen to me. They even detailed it and wrote it down. He's got, he weighs this, and he's he's this tall and, and Y'all don't, don't know what I... We know every detail the doctor has to say. I'm, I'm going to get back up. But we don't open our mouth and talk about the details of Psalms 91. And get in the place. There is a place of blessing and there is a place of increase. And a Christian can get out from under a pavilion of protection and blessing simply by opening our mouth and saying things that is not biblical or things that are not uh, God. We don't have to be news reporters. That's right. We're living in a world of where I understand we got four and five and six dollars a gallon. I understand that. But did you know God spoke to me the other day? I was so irritated about this. I've been talking about this until I was about to have, like the old I'm about to have a nervous breakdown. Come on, somebody. And, and every time I seen the signs on the gas pump, four dollars, five dollars, diesel fuel, blah blah blah, I'd about have a nervous, another nervous breakdown. God said, "Boy, I'm gonna tell you something. If you'll start saying the right things and quit complaining, come on, somebody. The first time we say a thing, we're just acknowledging it." The second time we say a thing, we're complaining. Come on, don't <laughs> no, throw nothing at me. I'm just. But the problem is, is we we jump out from under the covering of God's pavilion when we complain. Come on, y'all said you y'all done told me you read Joyce Myers. If you read Joyce Myers, you ought to know what she preached. If you complain, you remain. If you praise, you raise. That's right. So God said, pull your van in. I said, God's going to cost me over $100 to buy gas. He said, pull your van in there. And every time it's pumping in there, give me praise. Because you know what? I gave you the money to be able to buy that. You can buy it because it's my money. And you can praise me. You can praise me to victory. Amen. Out of your mouth or you can complain yourself completely broke and not have gas money to even get to work. I, I really do need an amen right about here from somebody. Else. Come on. I told you I didn't come to I didn't come to condemn nobody, but I come to tell us that the blessings and the promises of God, it said in Psalms 91, it said then these things will happen. Then, then, what well, then what? If I remain under the shadow of the Almighty, if I'll stay where God is wanting me to be, if, if what? I'll stay in faith about things. Listen to me, child of God. If you and I don't stay in faith and we complain, I want to go, i tell you what I did one time. I pulled my gas pump, my, my van, this has been years ago, to the gas pumps. I stuck the gas pump in there and the woman in Inside, didn't, she just irritated me. I, I kept pushing the button. I want her to turn it on. Y'all know how we are. We impatient. I want her to turn the gas pumps on. And I get irritated. I get into that nervous breakdown mode again. I get out from under the shadow of the Almighty. I start acting into feelings instead of acting into faith. And so finally, I walk in the store and I said, ma'am, 
Y'all know what I'm talking about when you get all crazy. Your voice gets loud and you walk in there and everybody in the store knows your foolishness. I said, turn the pump on. Well, most of the time when you open your mouth the wrong way, like she talked about in the morning, learn how to deal with people. You're going to get as much as you throw down. Yeah, come on. No. <laughs> I was saying the Lord. I should have went in and said of the Lord. <laughs> Ma'am, I know you're busy. I know you're so busy. I, I, and, and you know, would it be any possible way that when you get a chance, could you just turn my... Ain't nobody going to do me that way. I'm going I'm to go and then I'm going to tell them. To, see, I know how you little prissy self is. <laughs> Cause I'm a little prissy self too. <laughs> Ma'am, ain't nobody want you to spit all in their face and holler at them. And I can tell you this, and you're the same way. Somebody say something like that to you, you ain't doing nothing. This little short woman right here, <laughs> ain't no butter beans and cornbread coming my way if I don't learn how to talk to her right. So I come in there hollering at her. I just talk a little sideways with her every now and then. So what? She's starting you out. She's starting you out. But anyway, the lady replied to me, I'll turn the gas pump on when I get a chance. I said, well, I don't need this. We used to use a phrase, forget you. Forget you. So I walk out and I get in my van. And I turned the switch and I just left rubber. Not realizing that I had forgot to take that funnel out of the truck, out of the van. And I snatched that whole gas pump, front of the gas pump, Brother Tommy. I snatched the hose and everything and I went across the street. And I walked back in, I had a gas hose in my... <laughs> And then in a few minutes later, whoo, police pulled up. I started saying of the Lord. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> I got back under the spout where the glory come out. <laughs> yeah, under the shadow of the Almighty. I, sir, sir. Sir, you know when you get into that shit, you'll be a sir and a ma'am and it's okay. A sir, I, I did have a discrepancy there, but she wouldn't pump my gas and I forgot. And, and please forgive me, have mercy on me. And boy, he just said, well, I understand that. He started having mercy on me. I said, I got out from under the spout where the glory come out. He said, and the Bible says this, if you'll stay under the shadow of the Almighty, if you'll do what God is telling you to do, if you'll be obedient to God, if you'll stay there. And then the second verse says, I will say of the Lord. Let me, let me read this. Boy, this is so powerful. That whole verse, everything that was said hinges on these first two, y'all. If you want them to manifest in your life, get these first two. He who dwells in the secret place. Dwells means I live there. This is my lifestyle. I don't do everything right. Come on and don't excuse yourself if you know that you're getting out from under the spout where the glory comes out. Just get back under that. Just what does the Bible say? Repent. It means to turn around. Just, just don't worry about your power. All right, I, I snatched the gas pump out. I did. But I'm sorry. Yeah, you went back under the shadow. I got back under the shadow. Right. So many times we feel like that we can run our own businesses. Well, Joe Biden, how's that working for you? 
Come on, that's somebody that don't respect God, that don't care what God has to say. We got a government, part of them, that doesn't care one way or the other what God has to say about anything. And believe you me, they're out in the rain. That's why it's raining so hard on them. Amen. And, and it's raining on the whole world except for the fact that you and I, as children of God, should dwell under the umbrella. Yes, amen. So that in this world, you're going to have trouble. Are you listening? If we're trying to get rid of the trouble, you're going to do that when you draw your last breath and go on to be with God. That's it. But in this world, we need to learn how to walk in victory. Right. Yes, sir. And one of the biggest things is, let me pull them back here. Zip your lip. Come on now. And I'm not saying none of y'all went to cussing. I'm not saying you, you acted as bad as I did several years ago. I've learned a few things. But what I'm saying is anything we start to say that is contrary to this book. Keith preached last Sunday night and he said the words of God matters. Come on now. What we say out of our mouth matters. We should be cautious and careful what we say out of our mouth because our tongue can produce life or it can produce death. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? Yes, come on. Glory to God. I will say, He's my refuge. What do you say about the storm? What do you say about what you're going through? Do you say about what all the doctors said? Nothing wrong with good doctors. Right. Nothing wrong with good bankers. There's nothing wrong with the good, good uh, systems that you can use for the glory of God. But what do you say when the enemy comes in? The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him, which is the Word of God. And we need to raise up that standard. We need to watch out. Amen. Be cautious. Be careful. I will say... He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. On Him I lean and rely, and in Him I confidently trust. Yes, amen. Brother, Brother Keith, pull up that next scripture in the King James that we quoted or that we give to you. And I want you to notice something. We have a choice of we can walk in victory in this life. Child of God, I'm talking to now. Come on, yes, sir. Or we can walk around in defeat every time you turn around by just, just saying whatever we want to. Jesus said this to the, the so-called church, the children of God then, which was Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou hast killed the prophets and stoned them which are sent to thee. How oft, Jesus said, would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her chicks, her chickens, under her wings, but what? You would not. Jesus said, I, I would have I would have blessed you, I would have done this for you, I would have protected you, I'd have watched over you, I'd have gave you all these things, I'd have helped you, I'd have done those things. But you wasn't willing. Come on, somebody. That's why the Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Submit, come under that God's authority. Do you know what he's saying here? I preached the last time I preached on the authority of God. This is what he's saying. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that means under God's authority. Jesus, the why this is written because of Jesus, Brother Keith, is because he is the head of the church. Yes, he is. We're the body, Janice taught us this morning. We're the parts. And Jesus is saying here in these first three verses, I want to give you all these blessings and all these promises that we were able to shout about. But then you have to come under God's authority. I can't do it my own way. That's right. Come on. 
and expect God to bring all them promises to manifestation. If I'm not seeing some of the manifestations, I got too much of me. Right, come on. In the way. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about me. I ain't, I'm not just talking to you, but I'm telling you and I, if we need to know what our problem is, this is the problem we need to come under. God's authority come under his, uh, his rule. And when we make a decision or whatever we do, say, God, what do I do, Sister Heather? How do I do this? And boy, I'll tell you what, when we ask him, he'll start opening doors up and things will start opening when before you could not open them to save your life. Am I, am I preaching truth today? God is wanting to bring the promises and the blessings into our life. We should be the most happy people on Facebook that is born again, that is giving God authority of our lives. We should be the most happy people in the world, but instead we see Christians that is hard pressed to smile. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Do you know why? All they can see is what they're going through. Instead of knowing that I can have Jesus walking with me if I walk with him. He said, I'll be with you. But he's well, we have a part to this. I can, I can decide and, and I ain't never, never going to serve God again today and I can walk out of this building and never darken the church doors again. And Jesus would send me that scripture up there. Oh, Jerry, how often would I have gathered you under my wing as a hen does and takes care like, like these two take care of that baby. But you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't let me do it. I, I wanted to bless you and I wanted to give you things and I wanted to help you. And I wanted you not to ever have need of anything. I guarantee you, let me tell you about Donald and Janice when it comes to Gavin. They love him and they will break their bank yes, they will. to do something for Gavin. Yes, they will. How much more would our Heavenly Father do for Donald and Janice? Wow, come on. Because why? He loves them. Why do they do what they do? They love him. Love will cause you to look beyond people's faults and love them and see their needs. Janice, we need the gospel preached to the church because we don't know it. Church sometimes is mean as hell itself. Yes, sir got such a religious wall built up do you know before Jesus Jesus said oh Jerusalem Jerusalem how often do you know before he said that that whole scripture was what I read last week or week before scribes Pharisees and hypocrites that's who he was dealing with and then he turned around still Donald and said this Whoa, scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. Whoa, Jewish leaders. Whoa, 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 whoa. How often would I gather you under my wings? Them fools, I'm thinking, I wouldn't gather them under. Yeah, right. That's why Janice said this morning, God don't think like we think. That's right. And we sometimes don't think like God thinks, but if somehow or another, I can just get my mind renewed. Brother Tommy Walls, till I start thinking like Jesus, I could probably help somebody. Yes, sir. Instead of being judgmental and critical. I know you don't have to deal with that, but... I'm just talking about me. Hallelujah. God help me to be able to preach the gospel. But he said, for then he shall deliver you. For then, for then, for when shall he deliver me? When I decide to come under his wings and I decide to, Lord, I can't even walk. I can't. I, I, I've been in business in this town for 45 years and people know me like they know Donald and coming to know John and Keith and, and, and Billy and different ones and different ones of you. But I've been in here long enough that I've, I deal with influential people. But you know, it, it, and I appreciate that. Right. And I work hard and I still work and I still make a living in that, in that field. But you know what? I need to start more so focusing on staying under God's covering. Right. 
Because look here, these builders can retire, Brother Tom. These builders can quit. Things can end up. We we are we are being we we are being set up to be governed from our government. Don't you put your hand your cut? Let them be your covered. Because we're being set up to go to a communist country where don't 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 get all caught up in their checks. Because if you give somebody a check and give somebody money, you owe them something. They then begin to own you. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. So don't get so caught up in coming under a. a builders covering or, or coming under a, a government covering. Come on. Amen. Amen. But coming under God's covering. He said for then yes. I can do all these things for you yes. and God will bless Amen. like we ain't never been blessed before Amen. because if we stay in the place of blessing if we dwell in the shelter of the Most High we will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Verses 1 and 2 is the key to all these prophet, pr promises and benefits to have them manifest in our lives. Stay in the Word. 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 I don't care what we've heard over the years. If it ain't the word, you're getting out from under the, the shadow. And it's going, the devil wants to rain on you. Yes, he does. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes, he does. The promise and the benefits will manifest. Number one, no harm will come to your dwelling. Thank you, Lord. If then I will. God will command his angels to watch after you. If I stay under the shadow of the Almighty, the place of blessing. If you stepped out, step back. If you got out, don't just stay out there. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Get back on fire for God. Get that, get that, that purpose on fire for God. Don't let, don't you let. I was listening to Keith Moore this morning, and he said uh, uh, one preacher, I forget what his name was. He said he was real loud, probably like me and boisterous. And he said, I don't get into nobody's mind to tell me what to do. I get into God's mind by the power of the Holy Ghost to tell me what to do. I don't need nobody else's mind because, see, some, some people mind crazy. <laughs> Some people think they know the Bible and get on Facebook and they don't a bit more know the Bible than a man in the moon. Are you listening to me? Am I getting too long now? Are you, can you can just hang with me for just a few more minutes? Do you know that Psalms 91 was a Psalms that the devil quoted? The devil will quote scripture too. But you got to watch out about the devil quote scriptures because he'll only quote half of one. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen seen folks? I'm not putting down on nobody, but have you ever seen folks? They just quote half a scripture. Right. Resist the devil and he'll flee. That ain't the whole scripture. That ain't all. Come on. The whole scripture is submit yourself to God, and then. Oh, wouldn't it be easy to just say, uh, wouldn't it be, just resist the devil and flee. Get, 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 get. He's going to say, shut up, shut up. I ain't going nowhere. Until you say, I come under the authority of God. Yes. Submit myself unto God, then I have the authority. I got to come under the authority to have authority. That's it. I don't have my own authority. I got to come under. And if I submit myself to God, resist the devil and he'll flee. That's why many people can't get over their addictions. And many people can't get over the things that's got them bound. And many people can't get over the things that's holding them back. Is because they quote like the devil. A half of scripture. Resist the devil and he'll flee. No he won't. Because you can't take a half of scripture. He says, submit yourself to God. 
And then when you do, you have my authority to say you get out of my body, you get out of my life, you get out of my finances right now. Now don't you think he's going... I'm just, I'm just not through. I just, I'm just not through. I'm sorry. I just... Jesus was led of the Spirit. Chapter 4. I'm sorry, Brother Keith, I didn't give you this. Chapter 4 of Matthew. Then was Jesus led up in the Spirit of the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he's afterwards a hungered. And when the tempter came, what did he do with him? And when the tempter came, he said, he spoke to him. When the tempter came, he said, the tempter said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, that's the one I'm looking for. He answered and said, it is written. Amen. And it ain't half written. Come on, folks, the devil is eating our lunch and popping the bag because we, we spout out these little words that, that are not even whole scriptures and they're not even whole contexts. And the devil is eating our lunch and he don't care long as we don't get under that covering of God's word totally and fully. I will say unto the Lord, he said this, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not. Then he told him what was written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh them up to a holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, if you be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up at any time, lest I dash thy foot against the stone. And that is misquoted. Psalms 91 is where he got that. He, he quoted, he misquoted Psalm 91. There shall no evil befall you, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent. I better, you know what? I'm going to read that. Go to 91. You, you still in 91? Let me go to Psalms 91 over here. Hallelujah. There shall no evil befall thee, verse 10. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. In all thy ways. That's what the devil left out. The devil would like to leave all of it out. But he leaves bits and pieces and parts. So that he can keep us from realizing. That God is a God in every way that I have. And the devil misquoted that. God will command his angels to watch after you. If I stay under the shadow of the Almighty. Because I can't keep switching, switching authority figures. I can't keep jumping out. Of, Boy, I hope old Joe does something for us. Come on now. Joe's trying to make you a communist. And he's raising your gas prices to where he can shut you to the point to where you have to buy electric vehicles. Do you know what somebody said the other day on, on the news? And this has, been, this has been by scientists checked out. There is enough fossil fuel in the United States of America to take care of every vehicle that runs off of fuel for 200 years to come oh but we're running out 
They want to control you. If we, do, you do you know why they, they, they stop people from going to church and they stop them from going to work and they, and they told them uh, you need to wear a mask? And, I, and look here, if y'all all done that and those on Facebook done that, I'm not condemning. I told you that when I started, I'm not condemning. But what I'm saying is, is if somebody wants to control you, they'll send tests out. And they'll see, if, let's see how many we can get that'll do what we tell them to do. And come under our authority and see how many people will actually wear a mask. Come on now. That's right. Or let me just say this. We're going to shoot gas prices up so high that it's never been like that before. And let's just see if they'll pay it. Or if they'll submit. Do you know what, Jesus, what the devil told Jesus after we just read that about the angels? He said he took him up on a place and he said, if you'll bow down and worship me, I'll give you everything that you see in the whole entire world. And the devil had it to give because Adam gave it to him. Yes, he did. Amen. 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 And he said, if you'll bow down to me, you know what Jesus said? Man shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Do you know this was a picture of Adam in the Garden of Eden in his temptation? And Adam failed. The first Adam, but the second Adam. I ain't bowed my knee to you. We had a president a few, few terms back that bowed their knee to men overseas. Uh uh. That's right. No. The, this world system. I texted my, my, my contractor back yesterday when he told me a funny thing. I said, that's what we get in the Biden Babylonian system. You know what you know what Babel, you know what you know what Babylonian is Babel was the world system you know where ba the Tower of Babel started right that's where the Babylonian system came from Tower of Babel they said we'll build all the way to heavens ourselves we'll make us something we'll build this and we'll make, we'll build that and you know what they got very confused after that and they lost their own language and that's where every other language come from was the Tower of Babel. And they have been confused ever since. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they still believe that we're going to build this for ourselves. Let's see, see, if they'll, see if they'll come under our authority and wear these masks. See if they'll come under authority and stop going to church. Come on, listen to me now. If you're still scared to go to church, you're under the wrong authority. That's it. Come on, somebody. Brother John Hagee got shot at five times in the pulpit for preaching the truth. But all five shots, one went that way, one went that way, one went that way, one went that way, and one went that way. Do you know why? Because the man would stand for the truth. People are losing and even the church... Because we're not coming under the shadow of the Almighty, under the pavilion of God. So they test us. I'm trying to get through, y'all. I know the baby's over there saying, I wish that old man would shut up. I just can't get done until I'm done because, see, I may only get one shot at this. I don't know who I'm talking to on Facebook. You need to hear what I'm saying. And you need, you need some things fixed. This government is trying to shut the people, the people of the world down when we've got 200 years of gasoline that we, we don't even have to depend on Russia or anybody else. 200 years. Mm, mm -mm. God will command His angels to watch over you when you're pumping that gas. Billy said he went to the gas pumps and he was pumping. And he got more irritated, more irritated here this morning. He's trying to help Marshall. And he just kind of, with a louder voice, Thanks, Joe! <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to start, stop doing that. Thank you, Lord, that you provided me. I, I, got, I, can, I can buy the gas. Praise God. I can, get, I can pay the 
But the keys I can buy the seventy five dollars worth that I was complaining about earlier before church. <laughs> God Himself will guard you. I'm trying to close. God Himself will guard you. God will protect you. God will show you favor if you will remain here. It's your choice. I'm, I want to bless you, God says. But if you jump out there, did you notice that the prodigal son's daddy didn't go to the pig pen and drag him by his collar back to the house? You had to let him go. You had to let, and, and God's got to let us go. God's got to let us make our own decisions. Otherwise, we're just puppets on a string. We're not puppets on a string. If anybody goes to hell, it's not God's will. It's their choice. It's their choice. By not accepting Jesus as their Lord. If we dwell in the shelter or the place, which is Jesus, what does it mean? What can I do then, Pastor? What, what, what I need to do? All right, number one, this means stay close to God. Amen. Amen. Stay, in the word. stay close to God. Number two, keep Jesus first in your life. Huh? Amen. Come on. Nobody else. Keep Jesus first. The church would fill up if people would get a relationship with Jesus. Because we don't have to talk about church attendance. Because if you've got a heart toward God, you're going to want to come to church. That's right. Right? Yes, sir. Number three. All through the day, acknowledge Him. Don't acknowledge Fox News. Come on now. Boy, you put me in a box up there, preacher. You put me in a box. No, I'm trying to get you out of the box. <laughs> We're so limited. I tell you what you can do. I like Fox News. It's the only one I listen to, that and, and Newsmax. But you can listen to them in the mornings for 15 minutes, and all they'll do, repeat that all day long and all night. 15 minutes, all you need. You need to stay up to par. You need to stay what it is. But all they do is repeat, 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 repeat what happens. Sometimes there's something, a little something happen, but get about 15 minutes of it, and you'll stay up to par. But if you get too much of it and you don't even read your Bible and you don't even acknowledge God, yeah. then you've stepped out from under God's authority and folks, it's going to rain on us. Come on. That's true. When you get up in the morning, thank Him that you're alive and healthy. Do we do that? Ain't that that'd be a good thing, right? Meditate on His promises. Think about His promises. All day, day, thank you, Lord, you blessed me. Thank you, Lord, you, you give me. You know what I just got? I just got a brand new golf cart. Yay. Glory be to God. Yay. And that's one of them, and it's one of them things that's all jacked up, boy. I mean, look here, it ain't it ain't like no little baby golf cart. Heck yeah. I got them big wheels on it. You, you know, boys like big wheels, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for giving me a house. I've got food on my table. I got shoes on my feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing me. Glory be to God. Yes. When you make decisions, ask the Holy Spirit and be spirit led. Have quiet time with God for your answers. Get away from your husband, get away from your wife. I've got a prayer room in the back of my house and it is so back of my property and it's so quiet back there. And I just redone that thing and it's so peaceful and quiet. No televisions, no radios, no anything. And I went in there the other day and I sat down and all I could just hear just little birds and and my mind got to start. I, my mind was foggy, Brother Tommy, and it started to clear up. And the Holy Spirit just started talking to me. And have quiet time with God for answers. Yes. Don't talk to, sometimes you don't even need to talk to your friend. Because right. they tell you crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> or you tell them crazy stuff. 
as long as we're in the shelter, watch this, as long as we're in the shelter, we're connected to the line that will never run dry. Come on. I received that. Can I say that again? I'm about to close. <laughs> Heather, but <laughs> As long as we're in the shelter, we're connected to the line that will never run dry. How, how come this person's always got this and they got this and they blessed and they did because they stay under the spout where the glory comes out? It ain't that they're no greater than anybody else. It ain't that they're no smarter than anybody. Else. Sometimes it could be that they're not as intelligent as most people. But they got enough sense to know that I need to stay under God's pavilion for all of these blessings and these increased businessmen. Listen to me. If you don't want your jobs to run out, don't you put no trust and confidence in those people that run them, respect them, and honor them. But keep your confidence and trust in God. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. As long as we're in the shelter, we're connected to the line that will never run dry. When we're resting in the shadow of the Almighty, we have a hedge of protection and a hedge of favor that is constantly surrounding us. Glory to God. Man, why in the world would I not want to stay in the blessings of God? Well, he can't ask you to do stuff. He ain't asked me to do near, near the stuff I've asked him to do. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and you know what? As long as I stay under the spout where the glory comes out, blessings just flow. Yes. If you want to stop up the spout, just stop it up and get out from under it. But as long as we stay under there, we're connected. Glory to God. Lord, I praise you for your word. I thank you. It is so clear. God, it is so clear that you're wanting to bless people. It's just sometimes we will not. I, I don't want to be that person. I, I want to be the person that will. Because God, it has to do with our will. God, we want to see blessing and increase. And we want to see it, God, under your covering. Because that's where, as, as and then, that's when it's going to happen. So we praise you for it, and we're going to do this. Now, how many would be bold enough to say, I, I, I might have stepped out a little bit here. And you ain't got to go into no detail to nobody because we're not your confession gurus. <laughs> that goes straight to God. Some things I'm, I've understood, Brother Jason, that some things just ain't my business. But it's God's business. Anybody in the house that you might have just stepped out from under that cupboard and that spout, would you be willing to stand up and tell the Lord, I'm ready to get back under there because I want that blessing to flow in my life. I want that peace to flow. Is anybody in the house would be willing to do? I'm already standing up. I, I'm standing up. Y'all see what I'm talking about? We're standing up. I, I, I've got some things I need to get on back up under the cupboard. I want the Holy Ghost to flow in me when I preach. I want him to flow without hindrance. Come on, what do you want him to do? Go ahead and tell him. Just go ahead and tell him because you done told him you, 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 you're ready to step back under. So that's a done deal. Now I just tell him what you want. God, I want your anointing. Amen. I want the power of God to flow in me, God. I want compassion. Show me, God, how to have compassion for people. God, show me. I, I want these blessings and promises to manifest in my life. Heavenly Father, we want to do what you'd have us to do. God, we want to be a blessing to people. We want to see people increased. We want to see this church increase, God, and we believe that it is. God, we just praise you today. Every person that has stepped back into that covering can now expect every promise and benefit to come their way. Did you hear what I said? Now you can expect, now what would you do? You can expect every benefit and promise to come into your life. Now, you know, what would you do? Thank you, Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who always causes us to try in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I want you to do something. 
because we're expecting mighty things to happen. Tell somebody what the Lord has done. If you don't want, if you don't feel comfortable standing up in church, tell somebody what God has done. And can I ask a favor? And I want to do it to you. Let's don't tell so many people about how bad it is. Yeah. Amen. Can't stop. Because when David, he talked about not how big Goliath was, how big God was. Amen. That is. That's exactly what he said. Now, now the so-called church at that time talked about how big the giant was. I feel sorry for people that don't know enough about the word that when a tragedy happens, oh my God, 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 oh my God. That ain't praying to God. That's you scared to death. Close your mouth until we can give God thanks. I don't care how bad it looks, give God thanks for victory. It will manifest. I got to stop preaching, y'all. Give the Lord a big hand. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shake hands.